What's going on, everybody, and welcome to episode five of the Bombastic Podcast presented by Natty State Sports. I am your host, Andrew Ellis, and finally, I've been telling you guys that I was going to eventually not be alone on this program. We finally got our first guest. This is a historic moment. We got right-handed pitcher, the freshman, Gabe Gackle from Cali. Gabe, how we doing? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me. You excited for the season, man? So I guess we're now two days away. When you guys hear this, we'll be one day away, you know nervous about starting your freshman year just excited to get going like what's what's the the energy like i guess leading up to your debut yeah i think we're all pretty excited we've been uh playing the same guys for the past i don't know how many months but uh yeah we've been looking forward to this day for a while so it's exciting yeah i mean i bet i mean sunday or i guess it was saturday you had to face the starting lineup right yep so uh, i bet your next few tests will probably be a little bit easier than that so it's like if you can pitch well in that setting then you're good. But yeah, I, th I think about that with all of those guys. Whenever I'm out there at those scrimmages, I'm like, man, dude's throwing like 96 dotted on the black and then Reese Robinette hits a double off the wall or whoever yeah. it is. Like there's just always someone who's going to have your number that day and watching all these. I mean, Mason Molina, I see some fans worried about him. They're like, oh, he gave up three runs in a scrimmage. I'm like, well, he gave up. It's a pretty good lineup he was facing, but it is what it is. But yeah, man, those, uh, those, those off season scrimmages are so competitive. Did that kind of help you settle in when you first got to campus where you're Facing high level competition, but having some success, does it kind of give you a little bit of confidence of like, if I can get these guys out, then I'm going to be all right? Yeah, I think, I mean, that's one of the main reasons I came here is Arkansas always has a, a bunch of talent, you know? And so I think that pushes every player in our locker room to be better because, you know, it's, you got to work for your spot. And so when there's that many good guys, it just kind of elevates everyone. So, I mean, when I first got here, I got a, uh, a little humbled, I'd say. I think my first outing, Jason Jones went backside bomb next outing, maybe didn't get out of the first. And so it was just a learning curve and everyone kind of picks it up eventually or some guys do. And so I think it was great for me personally. Was it a little intimidating at first? Like those first practices when you're kind of looking around and like seeing some of these, some of the talent and being in those bullpens, like obviously you've got really good stuff. So I'm sure your stuff was fine, but it's like you're looking at some of these other guys and you're like, geez, these dudes, yeah. different level. Your little yeah. was a little bit intimidating at first. I wouldn't say intimidating. I mean, it was eye opening. I've, I mean, I've seen good players throughout high school in terms of like travel ball and stuff, but it's like you see that good player every now and then. Like here, it's like every single player was the top guy in high school and yeah. was every team's best player. So when you're here, it's just a bunch of great competition and a lot of talented dudes. And so it's cool, honestly. It makes everyone work hard and. Um, we can learn from each other. Like I play with a uh, Brady Tiger. I play catch with him every day. And since I've got here, I've heard know, he's I've heard he's pretty good. Yeah, that's what I've been hearing. He's all right. And uh, <laughs> so he'll he'll give me some cues and some stuff to work on, and maybe have me try a certain grip and just see if it works. And he actually gave me a little thing for my changeup that I think kind of helped me elevate it a little bit. So that's that's the the benefits of it is you know everyone can help each other and we can feed off each other. Have you ever had to catch a Brady Tiger flat ground? I mean, we'll uh, in catch play, we'll come into 60 feet and just like spin it. And so I guess. So you haven't had to like ground. get in the catcher's position. No, 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 no. I won't do that. We'll don't get a, don't do that. Yeah, I've, we'll I've heard it. some of your teammates have made that mistake of trying to catch a Brady Tiger curveball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's tough. It's pretty good. He's got, uh, <laughs> yeah. he's got some good stuff. I think did Will McIntyre break his nose? Did I hear that correctly? I forgot Brady did hit him in the nose. <laughs> I was like, I thought I thought there was a little bit of concern about uh I think he may have broken his nose actually. I forgot about that. Yeah. If I were playing that's uh, by the way, I would pick a different throwing partner. I would get someone <laughs> who's got a little bit of a uh, maybe your roommate Jay Wade Jay Wu, get a little bit like the, maybe the softer yeah. you know, slow. I mean, I mean he he mixes it up a good bit so everything he's throwing's got some dart on it, but I figure just in terms of your personal health I think Will probably better. might be the best catch partner. Yeah, cuz that dude ain't gonna miss a spot. Yeah, it's right at your chest yeah, and It's a good call. It's not going to be 95, so it's pretty nice. Well, I mentioned you were from California. Uh, what part of California? I, I forgot the name of it. What's this, the yeah, name of the town? I'm like in the Raff Bay Area. It's a town okay. called Aptos. Aptos, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's like an hour south of San Francisco. So, Gotcha. Were you aware before you were getting recruited by Arkansas that they have like a little bit of a pipeline in California? Like, Were you aware of like some of the players that had from California that a had gone to bit. Arkansas? Yeah, a little bit because Coach Hobbs is from the West Coast. He's a California mm -hmm. guy, and so – um that's how i originally got in contact with them was my coach new coach hobbs 
And, yeah, well, uh, Arkansas is a pretty high success rate. Yeah. Like, I feel like the, the, the Cali dudes, they've had like Dominic Fletcher, uh, Dominic Ficacello. They've had a lot of Dominics. Uh, Mason Molina now, I guess. Yeah. You, I mean, y'all got, they got a nice little thing. Y'all might have to get a, a group message going. We might. We'll you and Patrick group. Wicklander, <laughs> just like the, especially if you end up being like a like a weekend starter dude. Like, I yeah. think that's when you'll start, you'll start getting into the, the fraternity mm -hmm. of the California so. guys, man. But, I hope that happens one day. And uh, you're obviously not the only California freshman at Arkansas. Did you know Ryder Helfrich yeah. before? Yeah, I knew him really well. He was uh, in eighth grade. We were on the same team. And so that's when I first started throwing to him. And then throughout high school, we just played summer ball and everything together. And he's been one of my good buddies for, you know, since high school now. So it was, it was kind of nice that he was coming here with me. And uh, so, yeah, I've known him for a while. Worked out pretty well that the freshman you know coming in just turns out to be this generational catching prospect. I don't know if you knew that when it was happening, but yeah. it took about two weeks of him being on campus before the, everybody started kind of realizing, wait a yeah. minute, this this he's kid might be uh, pretty really good. good. So that's, that'd be pretty cool, man. You know, you and him yeah. throwing together, being the Cali boys and stuff. But uh, so did that come into your decision? Like when y'all were making y'all's decision to, did y'all talk about it? Of hey, maybe we'll go to Arkansas. No, it's a it's actually a pretty funny story, Ryder. Um, was committed to Cal, decommitted, committed here. And so he was kind of getting recruited a little bit earlier than me. And when my recruitment process started, it ended up being between Arkansas and UCLA. And Ryder was like, telling me, like, I, he was like, you need to come here. He's like, you gotta come here with me. And I was like, all right, I'll think about it. And I visited both places. I was like certain I was coming to Arkansas. And then I just ended up committing to UCLA and uh, so he was so pissed at me, he was so mad. <laughs> and then I eventually decommitted, and it was between Arkansas and AM. And he was gotcha. like, I'm not letting this happen again. I was like, you're coming to Arkansas. I was like, I think I am. I was like, that's the spot Dude, I want to be. So. Would have been a disaster if you had went to AM. Yeah. That would have been, at least if you stayed, you know, stayed in the state of California, like, you know, I'm not going to knock it. UCLA is a nice little program. Yeah. Aggies are weird, man. That yeah. would have been a tough one. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with my choice. You would have gotten a ring when you graduated, though. They get they have class rings at Texas oh. A&M. That's like a thing there. You get your class ring, and you, they're weird about it too. All right. If you if you know anybody who's graduated from A&M, be like, hey, yeah. let me see your ring. I guarantee they'll be like, oh, yeah. got it right here. This is my class ring. Whatever <laughs> year, there, it's a weird bunch down there. So you mentioned UCLA, Texas A&M. So growing up in California, did you go to a bunch of college baseball games? Were you going to UCLA or like you know um, whoever? No, I mean I would go to Stanford games every every once in a while just because it's like. I mean, it's 40 minutes from my house. So last year I went to the regionals there and stuff, but I never really went to a bunch of games. I've never really been in like, I mean, I, I always love playing baseball, but like watching it on TV and all that isn't my thing. I don't gotcha. know if it's a California thing because Ryder doesn't do it either. We don't really watch sports, but uh, I never went to a ton, but it was always a sport that I loved. And so... I kept up with it, yeah. but I never went to a bunch of games. So you haven't really gotten like that full SEC baseball experience. I'm, did you have you been to a game at Bomb like when it's really no. cooking yet? Uh uh. Gotcha. So when was your visit to Arkansas? My junior, my junior year is the weekend they played Texas in football. That I could see a lot of people committed to Arkansas that weekend, yeah. or were <laughs> on visits and thought about committing to Arkansas. Oh, That's when how I was visiting here. I was like, this is the place I'm coming, hundred yeah. percent, and then. My parents made me wait a little bit, and then I think I was, I don't know, Arkansas was a far, far trip, and so I yeah. don't know if I was ready for that at that age, so I was kind of maybe nervous, and then as I was getting closer to going to college, I was like, I want to be in the SEC. I was like, yeah. no question about it. I was watching it on YouTube, and watching all the postseason games like that's where i want to be yeah i remember i referenced dominic fletcher he's from cypress california i remember him saying that arkansas and ole miss were the only two places he considered which i thought was interesting because it's like you know you mentioned you used kind of a far drive like that's a little yeah bit of a, a big jump to make when you're 18 i remember so i'm from louisiana and i wanted to go to arkansas but i that was like that's too far away for me i was like that's an eight hour drive i don't want to be eight hours away from my parents like that's that's, yeah. a, that's a good bit i guess you just fly but i was like man i don't want to go eight hours away so i always think it's fascinating when kids just up and leave and go across the country. So you, you talked about that a little bit. Was there a moment when you first moved into Arkansas where you were kind of like, ah, man, it's far away. Like, I don't know. Like, was there, was there a little bit of nerves there when you first got to campus? There really wasn't. I was pretty excited to get here. Um, I knew a few people out here already before I got here. So I think that made it a little bit easier. And uh, it was a little nervous. I mean, I'm far away from my family, but my parents actually just moved out here yesterday for the spring. Really? So they're here for the whole spring which is nice. And so um, 
it's a far it's a far trip but i think uh I mean, it's kind of yeah. worth it being here. And playing oh, yeah. So. I was going to ask you about that because I know a bunch of parents, you know, like my best friend played at LSU and I remember his parents would just take off work every weekend. Yeah. And I was just like, how are you? Are you just going to do this for four years? Like, y'all just going to travel all over the place? But I know some parents just go all in on it. So that's cool to see that they moved out here yeah. and they're going to be. Yeah. Dude, it's uh, I, it's very I mean, it's funny now knowing that you have not really been to some of these SEC like y'all's road schedule this year i gotta be honest it kind of sucks <laughs> this is not i mean it's it suck it's still an sec schedule but like last year there was like duty noble mm -hmm. alex box stadium like this year you get to go to like i guess you go to a and m you get to go to yeah, we've got like a and m south carolina south carolina will be cool but like kentucky <laughs> kentucky's yeah, park kentucky. is actually new but it's like pretty bottom tier but you don't have to go to columbia missouri that's the worst trip by far in the sec yeah i've heard i've heard worst so. stadium worst fan base worst team it's going to be cold. There, it's always, for some reason, no matter when Arkansas goes there, it's like 42 degrees and 20 mile an hour winds. So thankfully, you don't have to do that one. Yeah. You get to play them here. But uh, yeah, I can't wait for you to experience like some of those. I mean, even Arkansas. I mean, like obviously, Arkansas is as good as any atmosphere in the country. Yeah. It's just, I mean, you see, you've been there in the fall. There's sometimes there's 800 people there to watch you scrimmage yeah, in the crazy. fall. Um, yeah, so it's going to be, it's going to be a little bit crazy. I was going to ask you, have any of the players on the team talked to you about that aspect of like, hey, when you're pitching in high school, it's one thing, but when you're pitching in front of 12,000 that are like drunk, crazy fans, it's a little bit yeah, different. Yeah, a little bit. Our coach is, uh, Coach Hobbs brings it up a lot and he's, you know, he's big into like the mental game and, you know, just not letting it all get to you. And uh, so he's talked about it a little bit and then Brady is, I, I, Brady's one of my best friends here now and so he'll He'll talk to me a little bit about it and just how to how to handle it and all that so i mean i guess we'll see what happens but yeah i'm pretty excited to play in front of some fans you don't seem like a super anxious guy who's going to be out there like panicking but uh it is one of those things that you either kind of it like makes you or breaks you i remember gage wood's first collegiate appearance i don't know if anyone's told you about that it was in arlington last year and DBH always tells a story that when he went to take the ball from him, he was like, sh his hand was shaking trying to give him the ball. Yeah. But then he came back that weekend and pitched really well. And then you see Gage at home in front of all those fans and it kind of fires him up. And you yeah. see like a different version of him come out. And Brady's obviously one of the best at that. Like fans love him just of how amped up he gets. And yeah. so it's uh, it's definitely a lot of adrenaline, man. It's, it's exciting. But luckily on this team, there's so many good arms where – you know, they're not asking you to come in and be the Friday night starter. Mm -hmm. They're not asking you to come in like, hey, you got to close games right away. Like, is there a little bit of comfort in knowing that you're surrounded by some talented teammates where you can kind of just get in where you fit in? There's You're not being counted on. You're not – you're no longer, like, the guy everyone's depending on, I guess, is what I'm saying. Yeah, it uh, it is, but also at the same time, like, we're all baseball players and we yeah. want to be the guys to yeah. be in those moments. That's what uh, – kind of what we work for, and so – Whatever role they want me in, I'm I'm happy with. Uh, as long as, as long as I'm pitching, I'll be happy. But I'm pretty fired up to play in some in front of some fans. That's what uh, that's what I'm excited about. Yeah. Well, speaking of your role, you know, there's four games this week. Who knows? Maybe they might need a fourth starter. Maybe maybe we see Gabe Gackle out there making his debut as a as a starting role. But I mean, that would be cool. Obviously, tons of midweek opportunities, and who knows what happens? I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that act, that can happen on the weekend. Uh, would you be do you have a preference of like, hey, I really want to start or I would really like to close or do you have a preference at all? I don't have a preference. I think, you know, in some point in my career, I want to be a starter. Um, but I mean, freshman year, as long as I'm pitching and helping the team out when, in, you know, whatever role I'm needed in, I'll be happy. Um, we've got a bunch of good arms. And so I think maybe they'll lean on the older guys just because they have the experience and when they need us, they'll use us. But uh We'll see what happens. It's a long season, so a lot of stuff can. Yeah. Well, I mentioned you pitching against the starters the other day. Three innings, no runs, right? Yeah. S escaped some trouble in that third inning. Yeah. But I thought that was like that was a big time outing, and I mean, obviously there weren't a ton of you didn't have to face the fans or anything, but yeah. I thought that outing kind of showed some fortitude for you, and it wasn't you know it's not like you were striking them all out, and which is kind of good. That's kind of how you we want to see you have to learn how to pitch and kind of work through jams like that. How yeah. so was that was that an outing the other day that kind of gave you some confidence of like hey I, I can start at this level like I can I can do this right now like I'm I'm ready to help this team today. Yeah, definitely. We have uh, you know the fall was up and down, and so I think it was kind of just like me finally starting to figure it out. Like I came in here and. It'd be my innings getting rolled. I'd be throwing too many pitches. I'd be trying to 
probably I don't, I don't know what I was trying to do, but I was kind of being too. I was trying to live on the edges and all that, and so um, lately, Coach Hobbs has just been telling us to attack the hitters and throw it over the plate and let them hit it, and um, you know, trust your stuff. And so that's kind of what I was doing. And so this whole this whole spring that we've had, like the three scrimmages I've thrown in, that's kind of what I've done, and just let the hitters hit it. And so it's worked out for me. And you just got to trust your stuff. Yeah, man. I remember last year there was a point. I mentioned Gage Wood. I thought Gage Wood sucked last fall, man. I remember being like, dude, this this kid just doesn't have it. Like yeah. all really all the freshmen last year, like him, Fouch, Coyle, it really took them a while mm-hmm. before they could even really get outs at all. You yeah. know, it was like it was really I remember Gage's first outing, he was like walk, hit by pitch, walk, one. grand slam. Yeah. And I remember that day just being like uh, we'll see what Juco ends up at. Who you know? Who knows? But it. Uh, but man, obviously that's that the talent level so high at those scrimmages yeah. where it's like there's really no shame in getting getting no. ripped there, man. But it, it, it'll uh, that prepares you better than pretty much anything because I mean like the competition oh, yeah. y'all are gonna face obviously opening weekend, but kind of moving on like you won't face talent better than the talent you're facing in practice for a, for a while. You know, it's, it's yeah. not many teams in the country that are matching that. That's the uh, that's the great thing about Arkansas is like your scrimmages are gonna be like games like there's so many good guys here is it prepares us really well for the games. And so, I mean, I remember my first outing was bad. Like I didn't have a good first outing. And so I was talking to Gage about it and he was telling me about his and he's like, don't worry about it. Like, I feel it like your first day. outing wasn't that bad. I remember the Jason Jones home run. It what wasn't terrible. Okay. It wasn't terrible. I had, a, which one was it? I had a bad outing at some point. And, uh, I'm sure at some point you might've had a bad outing. Who knows? Yeah. But. So, so some of the guys told me about their first outings and oh, yeah. it just happens and like uh yeah gage told me about his it was pretty funny but yeah. uh they're like just yeah it happens like every freshman's gonna go through it and so oh, yeah well it's like weird because there's the, there every year there's people like that who kind of get lost in the shuffle in these scrimmages because you're just you kind of write them off as like hey these guys have been struggling a lot but then you yeah. get them out there against different competition it's just a little bit different uh will mcintyre i don't know if he's ever had a successful fall outing like yeah. ever uh but it is, it is what it is some dudes just show up when the lights come on i want to ask you about some of the personalities on this team so obviously you mentioned or you told me off gear that your roommates with jay Wu cho yep. is it cho or chu i think it's I, I always say Jay Wu Cho. Cho, uh, okay. Exactly. Sure. DBH messes up the name sometimes. He was trying to tell us the other day that it was Vaheva Aloy. And I was like, I don't think that's Vaheva, right. Vaheva. Which one is it? goes either way. Okay, it goes know. either way. I'll yeah. give him a slide there. But he was saying Jay Wu Cho the other day or yeah. Chu. And I was like, I don't, I don't know which one's right or wrong. Last year, Jared Wagner, we didn't know his name was Wagner until halfway through the year. Literally, it was like mid-April. And then the SID was like, hey, by the way, you guys have been saying Wagner, it's Wagner. But apparently it's a thing in Nebraska. Yeah, w E G E G. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it pronounced Wagner for whatever reason. But I want to ask you about these kind of the, the the characters on the team. So you've got like transfers that are 23, like Cody Frank. I mean, he's he's got a 401k. Uh <laughs> you've got like freshmen like you, you've got dudes from Hawaii, you're from California, got a dude from Korea. Like, what are the what's the mix chemistry wise? Like, do the freshmen all hang out with the <clears throat> freshmen, or is it kind of just everyone? all in one big melting pot or what? Yeah, I mean, it, we've got a lot of diversity, I'd say. We've got, yeah, guys from South Korea, Hawaii, California. Um, I mean, at the field, I hang out with all the guys a lot. We're all pretty close, honestly. All the transfers, you know, they all, the transfers and freshmen, I think, fit in really well. And I, I don't know if that was us or the older guys just kind of accepting us that have been here. And yeah. um, I'm not sure, but like out, outside of the field, I, I hang out with a lot of the freshmen just because we're all in the same building and then brady's with me a lot and uh we'll all hang out at like kendall's house or something so gotcha. the team is pretty close um i mean there's like jay Wu doesn't come out with us a lot like he'll he'll hang out in his room just because i think he's talking to his family and stuff yeah. but everyone loves jay Wu on the team so jay Wu, jay, i get asked about jay Wu. i'll be honest with you i get asked about jay Wu more than i get asked about you which is funny because you were a, a very notable recruit and so it's like you'd think you'd but jay Wu is like someone that everyone that's like scanning the roster is like oh wait there's a kid from south korea like yeah. what but uh yeah it's uh it's definitely interesting but does it help a little bit because you see some of those tra- i mean the transfers also kind of have to find their way at first too mm-hmm. like ty wilms is like a three-year start on the sec all of a sudden he's got to like earn his spot at arkansas yeah. kind of meet new teammates so i guess it helps a little bit that yeah. you're not the only dude who's coming from far away and is trying to find their footing a little bit but uh who's uh who's the guy who's the best personalities on the team like i know peyton hold is feel like his popular answer here but who's like the guy that really loosens y'all up a little bit 
Yeah, Holt, Holt's an easy answer for that. Everyone knows about that. I think Kendall also. Diggs, yeah. Kendall's good with that. Um, all the all the all the older guys who have been here is kind of like fits that role, like Brady, Hagen, like all those guys kind of set the tone for us and get the team together. And so, uh, yeah, I think Holt and Kendall, Stove also, like all the older guys are really good yeah. at that. Um, I'm not, I don't have one specific answer. Though. Yeah, no, you're good. <laughs> uh, I think y'all should make all the lefties hang out. Yeah. I think that should be, I mean, the less lefties are weird. So I'm weird. Sure you've, I've got to say, I bet you, I don't even know who you played with in high school, but I guarantee you had a weird left-handed pitcher yeah. that you played with that just is what it is. But uh, Hagen, Hagen Smith might be the most left-handed person of all time. He might, yeah. He's super left-handed, man. He, he <laughs> big league me so hard in, at a restaurant in Starkville the other, last year. I was like, hey, can I see you once a week, man? Like, you, we should, yeah. you know, but he was I just like, crap that, but he's man. just, he's a, he keeps to himself a little bit. But I've heard he's uh he's starting to talk a little more, at least yeah. on the team. Because, I mean, I don't know, I'm sure he doesn't talk a ton to y'all as a junior. Mm -hmm. But you think about him as a freshman, really was not a huge talker. Yeah, well, him and, when uh, I was on my visit, he was a freshman. Gotcha. When we were all hanging out. I remember him kind of just sitting on it, like not by himself. Yeah, he was always just the quiet guy. But he's he's and, a yeah, killer year, man, though. Oh yeah, <laughs> you see it on the field. You see his personality kind of come out then. Yeah, yeah. He's a uh, yeah in the locker room. I mean, he's like still kind of quiet, but also not. I don't know how to explain it. It's just a weird lefty thing, maybe. But uh, weird lefty man. Yeah, he's no. extremely lefty. <laughs> he's like pure, but like both his parents are left-handed, like everything. Yeah. But but also, it works. It only plays if you're Hagen Smith. With if yeah. you're he if he were work. not good at baseball, then it would be like, hey, what, what's this guy's deal, man? <laughs> yeah. What's going on? But like, if you go out there and you're throwing 99, and you're uh, you know all SEC, all American. You can you can be whatever you can do whatever you yeah. want. To do. <laughs> so it just works out that way. Um, who's the hardest guy to pitch to on the team? Would you say? Have you, who's the guy that you've had? I mean, you mentioned a couple that got you, but yeah. Um, for me, I, Holt's kind of a tough out for me, and Jared or Jack Wagner. We were just talking about Jared, so it was in my head. But yeah. uh, Holt and Wagner are tough at bats for me. They're just those guys that take really good at bats. Like they'll foul off a bunch of pitches. They'll make you throw eight pitches in at bat. They'll work the count. So they're tough outs, um, and that's. That's kind of what we need. That's kind of what annoys yeah. pitchers. So I think it's going to be yeah. really good for us. But he's a, uh, he's a, I'd say he's a tough at bat, but also it's like he's either going to hurt you in the first two pitches <laughs> or he's not. Like he likes to go up there and swing. So it's yeah. not like he, like a long at bat, but yeah. he's, uh, he's always kind of scared. You figure out what's going on real quick. Yeah. You know? like <laughs> pitching to him is always like this ball could be put in the yeah. street. But uh, he hit, someone threw him an 0 2 curveball the other day. That he just got, I mean, I don't, he got every stitch of it. Yeah. It was just, just hung a 0 2 curveball. And so it's like he's so aggressive where yeah. it's like you can't afford to really make any mistake, mm -hmm. but he'll help you out a little bit. But I thought it was yeah. interesting that you mentioned Wagner and Holt because, like, I mean, Wagner and Holt might hit 6 7 on the team. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, one, two, McLaughlin. Oh, McLaughlin, dude, McLaughlin, yeah. He's, uh, this spring he's owned me. Yeah. Well, and he, you know, those are the guys that you really don't want to face. You know, it's always funny when you ask players who's the toughest guy to face, you would think everyone would say like Vahiva yeah. or Kendall Diggs or some of these guys that are doing all this damage. And Kendall's kind of that way where he works the at bats yeah, and stuff like that. But it's funny that you just look at this lineup one through nine and it's like, it's not really a time you get to relax. You yeah, know, there's no, no there's no let up at all. Yeah, it's going to be tough for a lot of uh, the opposing pitchers. Like, I don't know where the guys are going to hit, but I know that we have nine really good hitters. Oh, yeah. I play them all fall, so or all spring too. So the bottom of our lineup is going to battle. The top of our lineup is going to do damage. It's going to be uh, – it's going to be tough for the other pitchers. Yeah. Uh, with the pitching staff, who is there anybody, whether it's freshman, older guy, whoever, that like they're, they have a specific pitch that you're like, I need that pitch. I need that pitch, whatever it is. Because I'm sure y'all, you know, the, the track man and the – all the data y'all have, I'm sure you, you get to kind of look at them. Is there anybody yeah. on the pitch or on this on the staff that you're like, I need him to teach me that? You mentioned Tiger was showing you something with this changeup, right? Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm never gonna be able to throw this pitch just because I have really small hands. But every time I'll watch Christian Fouch, throw I knew that was litter. coming. Everybody, everybody you ask, yeah, Christian Fouch like splitter is the one. You'll see him throw it, and it's like that's not hittable. It's a tough pitch, and I don't know how he does it, but it is watching it is really fun. Because it's a really, really good pitch. Well, dude, even last year when he was a freshman, and he was, you know, he didn't even in the scrimmages, he he had his ups and downs and stuff. But it was so funny because 
I think he threw like 20 innings as a freshman, yeah. like, uh, you know, got some work and stuff, but he wasn't like a top dude on the staff. But everybody would ask, like, hey, who's the toughest pitcher to face? They'd be like, oh, Christian Fouch. Like, he got so, he, every hitcher, hitter, he's gotten them at some point with that splitter. Yeah, that, it's it's like a ridiculous. I don't know. Just how a weird he does mix, it. too. Like 97 upstairs with a splitter. It's yeah. just a, a very the unique. The way he one. throws, too, is kind of like, I don't know, it's probably deceptive to hitters. It's like he's almost, oh, yeah. it looks like he's not trying. He's throwing like slow mo. And yeah, then it just comes out of his hand at like ninety eight, and right. it's like I don't know how hitters time that up because it doesn't like, look like he's throwing hard. Yeah, it's, it's slow, a very slow, easy slow, and then ninety eight, and it's like I don't know how a hitter would ever do that. Yeah, uh, Mason Molina is the other Cali kid. I guess you, Helfrick, and Molina, y'all are the only Cali kids yeah. on this year's team, yeah. right? Did you know Molina at all before before he came in? I didn't. He's older. I never really knew of him when I got here. He was, was gotcha. I saw he was from California, but. He seems like he seems like a, a Cali kid. Like he yeah. seems really cool. Like when I remember the first time we talked to him after a scrimmage, uh, you could tell. I mean, and he's an older guy who's been around, had success. I'm sure there's some confidence, but he just seemed like he was, yeah, he was cool as hell. Man. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's an interesting cat, man. Those, the starting pit, the starting rotation with like him, Tiger, and Smith, three complete opposite personalities. I feel like they're just three very different dudes, but it's a it's yeah. an interesting mix, though. Yeah, they are pretty different. I don't. Like you're, the Brady you guys see is probably different than what we see. You see it on the field when he pitches, but yeah. in the locker room he is the he's kind of like the locker room clown. Like well, I figured a, he was a he was the most outgoing of yeah. the, of the three. He's kind of the the I don't want to say clown, but I mean he's he's the the outgoing and he's very confident. You could tell he's super confident just yeah. by the way he walks, the way he talks, and everything. And mm-hmm. and Hagen's more reserved, and then Molina's just like the perfect mix. I feel like yeah. of those two dudes, yeah. it's interesting. So uh, you mentioned. Jason Jones hitting that home run. But is there, was there another, like, welcome to college baseball moment for you where you were like, I'm really here. Like, I really got to – I'm going to have to figure yeah. this out. I mean, my first few outings, I kind of realized that, like, in high school you can get away with a lot. And uh, when I got here, it was like, if I got behind an account and threw a fastball in the zone, most of the time it was getting hit. And so after that happened a few times, I was finally like, all right, I need to change this. Like, it's yeah. not working. And so you, it's just – you can't fail as like you can't miss as much here yeah. like you really can't and so you just got to attack hitters or get get ahead in the count and then it's kind of you're in the right position but if you get behind in the count they'll uh they'll make you pay for it yeah you start to realize how many mistakes you've been getting away with you're like oh all those oh, times yeah. those dudes were swinging through 96 right down the middle it turns out yeah, can't do that forever huh? no. yeah but yeah, I feel like that must be – I'm sure – and there's some pitchers who just never really get over that where they're like, I've been mowing dudes down my whole life, and then now I'm here and there. I'm not mowing them down. They don't know how to adjust. Yeah. It's like they just kind of shakes them to their core a little bit. Um, I want to ask you about your relationship with the GOAT, Dave Van Horn. What was your – do you remember your first time interacting with him, whether it was like phone or in person? My uh, – yeah – I think it was my visit. I never talked to him on the phone. I always talked to Coach Hobbs. But on my visit, I talked to him a little bit. And then when I first got here over summer, we talked for a little bit, just like he was asking me how the trip was and all that. Uh, he's with the position players a lot, though. So, mm. I mean, I'll be with Hobbs a lot. He'll be with the position players. I talked to him for my exit meeting. But other than that. So y'all really don't interact like a ton. That must that actually must make it worse because it's like then you don't, you know, your every interaction, are you like a little like nervous or is it? <laughs> no. He's uh, an intimidating dude to me. I don't know about to you, but I mean. Yeah, he's a, uh, yeah, he's just not around us a ton because he's a, he's an infield guy. So. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't even think the older pitchers talk to him a ton. I don't know. No. I haven't been here long enough to know, but I mean, he's, he's awesome. He's a good coach. Well, have you heard the story of Will McIntyre storming into his office to demand the ball no nobody's told you that story i haven't heard that story I, well and i don't know if it was that dramatic but basically will will mcintyre start in 2020 he was a true freshman and he pitched a little bit before COVID happened okay and then comes back in 2021 red shirts doesn't pitch at all 2022 he doesn't pitch until like april hasn't pitched at all all year but he finally i think i don't remember if it was coach hobbs or van horn's office but he basically just went into their office and was like what I got to do to pitch, man? Can I pitch? And they they eventually, you know, he ended up getting a midweek start, and then the rest is history. Yeah. But Dave's reaction was kind of like, dude, just talk to me. Like, just, yeah. just say that. No, like, you could have uh, said that at any he point. He says it all the time. He says, if you, you ever want to know anything, just come talk to me. It's not. Yeah. So. Well, he's not one of those dudes who really, he's not a, you don't have to worry or wonder what he's, where he stands. Like, if you ask him, I feel like yeah, he's pretty yeah, straightforward yeah. and the to the point. The whole staff is like that. Like, they're, uh, yeah, they're very straightforward. They tell you the, they're honest with you. And so, I love it because they'll yeah. tell you 
directly what you need to work on to to help them. So. I, I bet your relationship with him is going to evolve a little bit. It'll be interesting once you really start getting in the mix and he's making, you know, making decisions. He'll start to, yeah. I don't know. That'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see how, how he goes about that. But uh, so the draft process, we don't have to get too crazy here. We don't have to get into the weeds of the draft process. Yeah. But was that a little bit stressful? Like, did you know going into the draft where you're like, hey, I probably want to go to school? Or at the, going into the draft, was it kind of up in the air for you? No, it was uh... – I, I changed my mind a lot on what I wanted to do. Yeah. Uh, going through it, like you do all the interviews with all the area scouts, and that's all super cool because you're just talking to a bunch of baseball guys and just chopping it up with them. So that was awesome. And then throughout the spring, like you don't really do much. You're just pitching. Your agent kind of tells you what people say and all that. And then it got a little closer, and it started getting down to like what your number, like my yeah. agent's like, what's your number, blah, blah, blah. And you apparently you're not number. supposed to lie about the number. Yeah. If you lie about the number, they're really, they're really mad at you. To, yeah. Super strict. <laughs> and so, uh, as it got closer, I was kind of like thinking of a number with my family and I sat down with my agent he was like, all right, we were going over it. And I was like, honestly, there's no number I want. I was like, I want to go to Arkansas. Like, even if they offer me $30 million, like I want to go pitch at Arkansas. And so that when I decided I wasn't going to sign no matter what, it was kind of a relief. And I just was able to get here in the next like week or so and just start getting here and getting settled in and working with the strength coach. And uh, so it was stressful because throughout the spring, I was changing my mind of like, I want to sign, I want to go to college. And so it was a little stressful. Yeah. But once I made that choice that I was coming here and that's what I wanted to do, I was it was it was pretty relieving. It would have really sucked if you had signed. Now, I don't mean for Arkansas. Obviously, we, we, we're happy to have you here. We look forward to watching you, you pitch. But I just think about it. I'm like, man, imagine being 18 yeah. and sleeping in a Motel 6 in Danbury, Connecticut, mm -hmm. having a, like, your roommate doesn't speak English, and you're like, man, this <laughs> this just has to be yeah. a way worse life than playing college baseball. I mean, it, Yeah, I'm really happy I chose to come here. It's uh, – the environments of the SEC baseball games seem amazing – it's a great yeah. facility, great program, great coaches, great teammates. So, like, I'm I'm pretty happy with my yeah. decision. Well, and like, as a player, I just feel like it, you know, and I'm, I'm saying this as a college baseball fan, but I feel like it yeah. develops you, especially at a place like Arkansas, you know, wherever you would have played in rookie ball or wherever, you're not going to have that pitching lab that they have. Oh, yeah. You know, you're not going to have all this access and, you know, you're getting professional coaching, but it's, it's not real instruction. You know, I feel yeah. like it's a little bit, you're just going out there and playing ball, which obviously you play ball a lot. You can play ball, but I feel like it for your development as a player, playing in the SEC, being here, being around these dudes, that has to prepare you as well as anything can. So when your pro career eventually does start, you won't be yeah. – I mean, imagine having to go through all the stuff we were talking about earlier of, like, how, learning how your stuff works, you know, new teammates and all that. Doing that in the pros as an 18-year-old probably isn't yeah, that fun, yeah. you know? I think I've already improved a ton since I've got here, and oh, so yeah. hopefully it keeps continuing to, to progress. But, uh, I mean, yeah, coming here for three years – or hopefully three years and being <laughs> in the same strength coaches program like bell's awesome our strength coach is probably one of the best in the country and so that is big for us and then coach hobbs is working with us for three years and then so i think if you get worse here you did it to yourself like you got yeah. every re resource you need so uh we'll see what happens yeah. how much are you in the big facility the new one in right field like are you there just like do you pretty much just live there? Or is, yeah. there, are there players that just are you they have to they have to kick them out of there? Yeah, I'm in there a lot. Especially in the falls in there a lot. And we've got a ping pong table in our locker room. We've got hot tubs and all that. So everyone likes hanging out in there. And so yeah. I'll be there for a while. Once I like after this, I'll probably head over there and get back around like six. But it's not like it's like fun to be there. Right. It's not like you're working. Yeah. You know, I mean you're working, but it's not like you're like being forced to be there. Yeah, like anything. after we're done with our day, there will be guys yeah. playing ping pong for two I heard the ping pong gets pretty uh pretty intense there. Yeah, it does. Who's uh who's who who talks the most shit at the ping pong ping pong table? <laughs> um I bet Brady Brady Tiger talks, I would imagine. Brady <laughs> He's on there a little bit. I, I'd say Gage. Gage does. Gage would. Yeah, Gage likes playing ping pong. I play Stone Heel it a lot, and he's really good. And it's another weird lefty. It's really annoying because he's not like. <laughs> I take it back. Stone Heel it's the most left-handed person yeah, of all time. Be. He's very left-handed. <laughs> he's like the guy who would just like he won't ever like spike it in your face, but he just returns anything you hit at him, and it's the most frustrating thing I think as a as a yeah. another player. It's so annoying. 
I uh, my so my best friend pitched at LSU, and I I grew up hating LSU. Yeah, my whole life. So it was kind of tough whenever he went there, and all of a sudden I'm hanging out with him, and I kind of like him. But for some reason, his class that's all they did was ping pong, and yeah. so it's like they were all so good. To where, like, as a normal human, I just couldn't play with them. I was like, y'all are too good, and I just, it's not fun, like, what y'all are doing. But, uh, so I, I imagine put, it's like that at a lot of yeah, college. Yeah, I put a lot in the fall. Uh, there's a lot of broken paddles in there because <laughs> the games get pretty intense. Oh, yeah. I, I forget who broke one the other day, but they'll lose <laughs> and they'll, they'll slam. I bet Brady thing. Slavens, when he was at Arkansas, broke his fair share of ping pong battles. He almost broke a few bats. Yeah, it, it, it happens. Be prepared, though. Hoover. So in Hoover, I think they split up like I think there's like three main sites that all the teams will stay at for the SC tournament. I've heard that that's where the the team you might have y'all might have to take on Georgia or whoever in the ping pong. Really? Because it's a, it, there's kind of like a shared room in the bottom where there's like an arcade and all kinds of stuff. So like you know ski yeah. ball, you know field oh, yeah. of hockey and all that. Y'all are gonna yeah y'all are gonna have to get after it. That's so be, be intense. That yeah. should be y'all's goal between now and May. Y'all got to get ready for to right. dominate Hoover. Y'all gotta y'all yeah. gotta dominate that. I think we'll be ready for that. Absolutely, man. So, hey, what's uh, what like? Obviously, we talked about that the road schedule this year is not great. What are some of the SEC places that you're looking forward to? Like, you're like, can't wait to go there. Yeah, I've heard South Carolina's super cool, and I've got family an hour from that stadium, so that's gonna be a cool one for me because I'll have family. Oh, you got close. family on the East Coast? Yeah, North ah. Carolina. So, I'm excited for that. And then, where else do we play? Kentucky and um, I think South Carolina is what I'm most excited for. Yeah. Next year's schedule will be cooler. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I guess there's going to be two new teams. Who knows where? But Arkansas went to Texas for a midweek not too long ago, and that was pretty. It was pretty cool. So I bet a weekend series. Arkansas yeah. and Texas will be sweet. Uh, you know, the box duty noble. I mean, you'll you'll get to see them all by the end of this sucker. But uh, yeah, yeah, man, it's going to be. There's some good stadiums. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, before I let you get out of here, man, I want to ask you, the Dukes of James Madison. Do you, do you, what do you know about them so far? Have you have you dove into the uh, the scouting report yet? We haven't yet. I think we'll go over <laughs> that today. It's just some of their hitters, um, but they're div- it's Division One, so every yeah. team's going to be good, and so we're going to have to take it game by game. But uh, I'm excited for it. It's going to be fun Friday. Yeah, Arkansas. Arkansas lost on opening day. When was that? 2022. And you would have thought the world was ending, man. People were yeah. like, "How could they?" It was Illinois State. That's who got them. Yeah, I think. But it's yeah, it was. So it's a hundred percent happens. It just happens. Gonna, uh, every team's gonna be good. We play so. Oh, I just remembered about South Carolina. Be careful there because they like to. Uh, their student section likes to chant. There was a do you know, a couple years ago, Arkansas played, and Robert Moore, who I'm sure I you've heard, heard of, this. yeah. They called it chanting Oompa Loompa, and then he goes back to back bombs yeah. on them and just pimped the hell out of them too. Every time he would hit a home run. Like Vahiva, honestly. I have not seen Vahiva hit a normal home run. Every home run he hits, he pimps it. Yeah. That's how Robert Moore was. And so that was one of the coolest moments of that year was them chanting, Oompa Loompa, and then him just drilling one like 460. <laughs> but, uh, man, those those moments are going to be fun, man. I can't, you know, we'll see we'll see how it goes. But I'm excited for uh, I'm excited for Arlington too, man. You, you, have you ever pitched in a, in a pro, like in a big league stadium? Yeah, I've thrown in um – the Rays and the Diamondbacks, but I heard it's different. Yeah. I heard it's nowadays, crazy in Arlington. Nowadays, every damn showcase is in an MLB yeah. stadium. It's like back in the day, I remember, I remember when one of my buddies pitched in the Brave Stadium and like we thought he was a god. Yeah. And now it's like when you're 14, they just every every yeah. tournament you play is in Disney World and all that. I mean, it's, you had to earn that back in the day. Yeah, I heard Arlington's pretty special. There's going to be a lot of yeah. guys there. Well, it's so. like brand new, you know? So yeah. it's, and it's, uh, and there's going to be so many hog fans. There's way more hog fans in Dallas than I realized, but a bunch of people that like are just from East Texas is just go to school or uh-huh. vice versa and so like there's going to be especially like Oregon State that game's going to be yeah, it's gonna be hostile crazy. yeah uh, and Oregon State's probably not going to bring a ton of fans so it might just be a sea yeah, of red there in Arlington yeah, yeah. but uh, in that Oklahoma State game I'm sure your teammates and some of your coaches will let you know that Oklahoma State game it's going to be a fun one yeah you better uh you better be you better be ready to ready to scrap that day <laughs> might it might come down to it but uh well, Gabe, man, we, we can't wait to watch you you pitch this this weekend and so on these next three years. I appreciate you coming on. And, hey, there's going to be people who might get drafted over you, maybe get all SEC over you, but nobody will ever be the first guest of the Bombastic Podcast. <laughs> you were you were number one. Well, so. I'm honored. Well, there you go, man. Well, hey, we appreciate you, and uh, we hope you guys enjoyed listening to this and getting to know the best freshman pitcher in the country. I'm going to go ahead and just declare that. I'm also going to declare him the Monday starter. Dave, if you have a problem with that, give me a call. But uh, look forward to Gabe making his first career start Monday. I'm going to go ahead and call it now, speaking it into existence. Uh, Gabe, for real, man, I really appreciate you coming in to do this, man. Uh, You're the man, and we appreciate you.